As the Omicron surge continues to trend down, some school districts are deciding now is the time to drop those mask mandates. We're joined tonight by Dr. Jennifer DeLucia, pediatrician with University of Toledo Physicians and a partner of the V Project. Thanks so much for joining us again, Dr. DeLucia. Let's start with those mask mandates. Uh, those case numbers are dropping, but in Ohio, 22% of 5 to 11 year olds are vaccinated. That's pretty low. So what can parents do to keep their kids safe as those mandates are dropped in the classrooms? Those numbers really are low of vaccinated kids and really over the country. That number varies so much. We've got some places like Vermont has 48% of kids ages 5 to 11 vaccinated. And we are, as you said, around 22%, which actually isn't even the worst in the country. The hard thing is the American Academy of Peds is still recommending that kids wear masks in schools for anyone ages 2 and up, with very rare exceptions. You know, it's hard for me because on the one hand, I agree with the American Academy of Peds, and I'm still worried. There's a lot of challenges and a lot of things that we still don't know about COVID. And as Dr. Walensky said, some of the numbers are still up that we look at, like the deaths, the number of hospitalizations, they're still higher than they've been. So from that standpoint, I'd like to see the mask mandate stay on. But the very most important thing that we can do to protect our kids of course, and I know I sound like a broken record, but is to get them vaccinated. That's the best way to protect them. Aside from that, of course, hand washing, ventilation, maybe if the weather does turn to spring, some of the classes can be held outside mm -hmm. or windows can be opened. That ventilation is really important too in trying to keep the amount of virus load in a classroom down. Yeah, what I wanted to ask you is, from the parents that I've heard from, they just think that the symptoms aren't too severe for children. They're very minor, and I guess they're weighing that with any potential risk with a vaccine. Maybe it's due to misinformation. I don't know. But what are you telling parents who come to you saying that they don't want to get their kids vaccinated? Maybe they think it's not necessary. Right. And there's a lot of people that do feel that way. You know, there's a lot of reasons that we give vaccines. One of the main reasons I believe to vaccinate any school age child is that the kids that we're seeing in the office right now have more mental health issues than we have seen a population of kids have in all the years that I've practiced. And most of my colleagues, even the older ones, say the same thing. Even the U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy talked about the fact that this generation of kids, because of the pandemic and the challenges that they've faced, have more mental health issues than anywhere else. One way to prevent schools from closing and kids from going into isolation or quarantine again is to get them vaccinated because that will help keep kids in schools and help keep schools open. That's a new reason I haven't heard yet. Uh, what can you tell us about the possibility of a vaccine being made available for kids under five? We have about 20 seconds. Okay, so really quickly, they're doing something right now from the FDA called a rolling submission. The Pfizer especially has already submitted data for the first two shots, both three micrograms, much smaller than we get, in the series. The safety was good, the efficacy wasn't so good. So now, like a lot of kids' shots, they're adding a third shot to it. And they will submit that safety data, hopefully by the summer, as soon as those trials are completed. Dr. Jennifer DeLucia, partner with the V Project, thanks so much for your time tonight. Thanks, Melissa.